Hey everyone, I'm Rather Incoherent, and this is the Tony Morgan deck that I just finished the Innsmouth Conspiracy with. I was playing it alongside a Trish Scarborough, who was my dedicated Kluber, and this deck is disgustingly strong. The core concept of this deck, the way that I built Tony, is pretty straightforward. If I have a Switchblade and anything else, I can finish the 8th scenario of any campaign. The only complication to that is what happens if I take damage with my 5 Sanity, 2 Head, and 2 Foot. Tony's weakness is his frailty. So I built the deck with just the core idea of trying to negate that weakness. At some point in most campaigns, maybe even all the way up to the end, I'd be running a You Handle This one, but I was partnered with the Trish Scarborough, so that just kills my partner instead, so it's not a solution here. In this deck, the solutions are sort of three-part. The first solution is Well Connected, it's just a big money deck, I can use Well Connected to get through that. Likewise, it's a big money deck, I can use Counter Espionage to protect myself, and if I don't need that, to protect my teammates. The second part of this solution is Infinite Soak. Throughout most of the campaign, I was using Lonnie Ritter alongside of Heavy Furs. At the end of the scenarios, when I had just like more experience than you should ever have in a deck, because we're playing Insmith, and I've taken In the Thick of it with Sharon Zobel. I got a Precious Memento and a Relic Hunter as an upgrade to the Heavy Furs, but that is just complete overkill. So Infinite Soak is the second way that I'm dealing with my weaknesses. And the third is just brute forcing through them with extra stats. The Black Fan and Gios combined to give you plus two to all your stats. And with Force defensively and a lot of things that are penalized you being based on how much you fail by, you're just kind of safe. The problem is that what I've just laid out isn't filling a deck. There's a lot of room left in a deck. And it's also not enough to keep you alive consistently, which is why I built Tony as a Seeker instead of a Guardian. That lets me run in Deep Knowledges and Preposterous Sketches to just stroll through my whole deck faster. So this might look like a really high setup, big money deck, and it might play like that a lot of the time. But I'm not setting up to kill people. Tony just does that with a Switchblade or a Lone Colt or a Knuckle Duster or whatever happens to be in your deck at a given moment in time. I'm setting up to keep myself alive. And it's only an incidental consequence of the setup that at the very end of a scenario, I spend like the first two thirds of a scenario just doing my job and setting up an alternate. But at the very end of a scenario, that home stretch, Tony's actually able to function as Flex Cleaver. His book will just get pushed to five by accident, and you'll be taking five action turns because of the Black Fan and Leo. So if you do get to a point where your teammates haven't handled the clue game, in that last portion of a campaign, or a scenario rather, Tony's actually able to help with flex loose. And of course, I got the intel reports as well. In my campaign, Tony never really showed this off. You can make the mistake watching my game that I made a bad Tony deck that just sets up forever for no reason, but I'm only setting up because I value it defensively. I don't care at all about any offensive value of big money. And the things that I could do that are proactive at the end of a scenario that are totally unnecessary but helpful to my team, double doubling an intel report or investigating five times at five. These are definitely valuable, but the scenario is very frequently ended like right as Tony finished setting up. He was partnered with Trish and Trish didn't need the help. But if you're playing Tony alongside some weaker investigators and you're actually getting close to running out the doom clock, Tony does hit the point where he can start finding clues and meaningfully helping out your party and that aspect of the game. To briefly touch more on the choice of going Seeker for this higher draw, getting online faster so that I'm safer to the Mythos deck, I would say that Seeker felt unambiguously bad in like the first two scenarios. If I'm fighting with Knuckle Dusters most of the time, I don't want deep knowledge and sketches in my deck. I want overpowers and darings, things that just like make the Knuckle Dusters more reliable. When I'm swinging at a four fight, three health ends with Troublemaker, I don't want to swing Knuckle Dusters twice at plus two. I want to commit Vicious Blow and swing once at plus three. Tony feels like a meaningfully worse fighter in the first part of a game when you go yellow. But Tony is the strongest scenario one fighter in the game, and he can afford to be a little bit worse in that portion of the game. The only real weakness Tony has is that he's frail. He has twos in his defensive stats and five in his war soak. So I think it's entirely worth going Seeker just to try to set up defensively as fast as you can. That said, I think. Much like Trish, no matter how you build Tony, you're going to build a really strong character. He's a 5 fist fighter, and a class whose weapons were all balanced around having 3 fist. You get to pick his off color as anything but Mystic, but you would never want Mystic anyway. And his ability is that he just gets an extra action to do the thing that he wants to do, but you get paid for doing it. Like, he's ridiculously strong at a very fundamental level. 
I just happen to think the best way of playing him is to focus entirely on the defenses. Because you're never going to fail to do your job. You just need to make sure you don't die along the way. And if you do focus on his defenses, then you just incidentally become a flex Kluver along the way. Which is a really strong way to help your team. And again, another strong way to help your team is by running counter espionage. Warded Protection is a great card, even if it costs 6. Coming over to his level 0 deck, it's largely what you would expect. Like, this is just the baby version of the deck you just saw. There's almost nothing to comment on. And it's, I guess this is the first deck I've shown in a review that has this specific combo. In the thick of it, Karen's Oval, Easy Mark, is deeply personally upsetting. Partly because it's so incredibly strong. But mostly because I can't really envision a good reason for a green character not to take it. And I really don't have much more to say about Tony. I guess briefly before we leave, I will mention that Tony's quarry is just ancient evils a lot of the time. I think at least three scenarios, Tony's quarry was an completely unmitigatable ancient evils in my game. But unlike Agnes, I feel like Tony is unambiguously worth running ancient evils. Like, it sucks. I'm not happy that Tony's quarry is here. But most of the time, it doesn't do anything. And even when you get unlucky, Tony's probably going to pay for that at some point. Because like I was saying, if the Doom Clock does start getting tight towards the end of a scenario, you can double-double out an intel report. You can just start investigating five times at five at a given turn once the enemies are dealt with. Tony might make you harder on Doom, but he's going to pay for it himself. He's just stupidly strong. I will note that until the end of the campaign, I didn't realize that Reckless is committed to a skill test and Gias does not specify non-weakness on its text like I thought it did. So at some point, I almost certainly cheated. But that's hardly a point against Tony. Anyway, the extent of my high-level analysis for Tony, who I think is the best fighter in the game and just disgustingly strong, is if you're that good at your job, don't build to do your job better. Just build to not die. If that incidentally makes you a half-decent Kluber along the way, all the better. Anyway, I've been Rather Coherent, and that's it for now. If you like this video, then consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. All that stuff really helps the channel grow. And I'll see you in the near future with more content just like this.